Hey everyone and welcome back to Crown Corner. It's your friendly neighborhood crown here, ready to whisk you away into a world where the unexpected is just around the corner. Today we've got stories that'll make you shake your head in disbelief, maybe even cheer a little for the underdog. We're talking about everything from grocery store showdowns to righteous revenges and even a babysitting blunder that takes a wild turn. So let's kick back, relax and get ready to be entertained. These tales are guaranteed to make your day a little more interesting. Let's jump right in. This happened three years ago in Germany after I just turned 18. It happened again in a grocery store, the only public place I really frequently go to, so yeah. <laughs> also, after I got my driver's license, my parents gifted me a used Pujo 207 SW. Built around 2012 slash 13, really nice and good first car. Don't judge me, my family is a bit well off, not rich, but none of us is entitled. This is also important for the story. Back then I just turned 18, I was 5'11 and weighed only around 139 pounds, which is not much for my height. Keep in mind that German grocery stores hardly have in-store security, if any at all. On to the story. It actually started in the parking lot where I just parked my car. Still, somewhat feeling mighty good driving my own car around and getting that good portion of independence by it. While I'm getting my shopping cart, I hear some little brat whining about something and turn my head just to see the entitled mother and her son think pre-primary school stepping out of a nice and expensive looking BMW. She came up to me and asked for my shopping cart, which I declined because I had to put a coin in it. From what I remember, she frowned, waved it off and she muttered something but I just locked my car and went shopping without thinking about any of this. In case some of you didn't know shopping carts are locked and you need to put a coin into it to be able to use it, you only get the coin back if you lock the cart to where it belongs after you finish shopping. Now all the while I'm shopping you can hear the entitled brat complain about this and that in a store even about the smallest nonsense things. But it all started to go south when I wanted to treat myself to some beer, a bottle of wine and cigarettes. The legal drinking age in Germany for beer and wine is 16. Legal age for the hard stuff is 18, smoking also 18. Now these sections are close to the cash register for obvious reasons. And spoiler, it was the last bottle of this kind of wine. And the entitled mother didn't like it one bit that I took it. I put it in a cart and almost instantaneously heard the ahem followed by and I wanted the bottle young man in an annoyed voice. It was the entitled mother. Now I was a confrontational person even back then when I was more polite in my way of not backing down. So I turned around and did the only reasonable thing. Said it was first come first serve and that she could ask the cashier if they had more bottles in stock. For some reason, a completely reasonable response made that Karen freak out. Here comes the infamous and informal slogan of this subreddit. I'm a single mother and I'm in a hurry. Give me that bottle. I deserve it more than you, she growled, followed by something along the lines of, you're too young for such stuff anyway, does your social worker know what you're doing with your money, getting drunk on taxpayer money? Now I'm gobsmacked and irate at this woman, who does she think she is? I was still trying to be polite in a hopeless effort to defuse the situation. I'm in the process of graduating school, how would I be on social aid? I muttered which just made her angrier for some reason. Go do something with your life, you alcoholic. Only failures and people on welfare drive such low-level cars. She meant my car keys which were half-heartedly hanging out of my jeans pockets. How delusional was this woman? Last time I checked people on welfare are taking the buses. She tried to reach for the bottle, tried to slap my hand and even wanted to yank my shopping cart away. Which is when I pulled my shopping cart away and told her to leave me alone and to get away from me in a stern voice. But she did the opposite. And then it happened, quite fast. From what I remember, she lunged forward and tried to take a wild swing at my face, which I plugged by basically smacking her hand away. A basic move you learn in many Far East martial arts styles. And yes, I have some years of training experience in Judo, I was never fully into it. And I had already stopped training for quite a while when this happened. Yet you still don't forget the basic moves. Before someone could step in, and before I could have even told her to stop, she already tried swinging at me again. Now I grabbed her wrist with one hand, grabbed her sleeve with the other, and threw her over my back onto the ground, 
using her momentum, which is a basic judo move. She however landed so badly on her bottom that she got hurt, and ambulance and police were called. At this point, the entitled mother somewhat curled herself in agony on the ground and screamed bloody murder with people starting to come over. A cashier supposedly saw the whole thing and there were cameras, but this somewhat unnerved me. I never had contact with the police and didn't know what would happen now, although I technically did nothing wrong. Cue to the ambulance and the police and her supposed brother, where she could have lied about the single parent thing, came to pick up the little brat. Police took statements, watched the CCTV and the whole shebang, while I kinda unnerved the whole time. The fact that this Karen still screamed bloody murder in pain and was trying to threaten everyone with a lawsuit who came near her didn't exactly help the situation. Until she got carried off in an ambulance because there was something with her hip, they obviously didn't tell me exact information but the hard fall onto her bottom seems to have caused some kind of damage to her hip. In the end, the police told me that nothing would really come of her threats and I could press charges and I definitely said yes. I got the employee discount at checkout as an apology for experiencing attempted assault. I'm not sure if this one belongs here as I was not the one actually wronged. My revenge was taken for someone I have never met and honestly, I don't know if they personally got any satisfaction from it. I don't know what it did to the perpetrator and that it satisfied me. So I'll let the readers decide. Like many of my tales, this one takes place in the distant past before cell phones were common and before universal caller ID was a norm. In a time dinosaurs most likely roamed the earth, well the 80s at least, these things are very important to this story. Our tale takes place in a large west coast city known for a big orange bridge and delicious sourdough bread. I was living in the city for several months for contemporary duty for my company. I was preparing for work on a day in question. As well as my custom, I was getting dressed listening to the morning radio show on a local station. The station's jocks had started doing something called the Monday morning wake up call, where on the first day of the week, they would make a prank call on the air to a victim chosen from writing suggestions from the listening audience. Doing this was actually pretty controversial in radio circles at the time. I have been a radio DJ in my hometown for a few years and there are rules you must follow. One of the biggest rules is that you can't make a false or deceptive radio transmission, like announcing an emergency sending an SOS or cry for help or other such deceptions. Doing so is a federal offense. You can lose your license and be fined or even do jail time. It's a big no-no. The debate has long since been decided, but at the time doing prank calls on the air was a gray area. There were people who were sure it constituted a false transmission, and some stations refused to do it. The argument was still alive at the time this happened. This day happened to be Monday, and the intended victim had been nominated by her husband. They had experienced the power failure at home earlier in the week and the husband's suggestion was that the station call his wife, claim to be from the utility and tell her that the power outage was somehow their fault and they would have to pay for it. The station staff loved the idea and they proceeded to call the wife at her place of employment, a local bank. The victim answered and the prank began. Hello? Is this Mrs. Victim? I'm John Doe from Area Power Company. Do you remember having a power failure earlier this week? Well, it was due to a blown transformer on your plug and we've determined that the cause is a wiring fault in your house. We may have to cut off your power until you get it fixed. Also, you will be charged for the transformer. The total cost is X thousand dollars. Would you prefer we put that on your utility bill or do you want to make other arrangements to pay? As you might imagine, the woman was shocked then scared. As she asked for more information, having trouble believing that they were going to have to pay thousands of dollars, she got increasingly more upset. This egged the radio staff on. The guy making the call kept increasing the pressure on her more and more, eventually telling her that her power would likely be cut off until payment was made and that there might be a lawsuit. After several minutes, she suddenly hung up in tears. He called her back and when she heard his voice, she hung up again, crying even harder. This time, the guy waited a minute and then called back again. Another lady answered the phone, a co-worker, and he asked to speak to Mrs. Victim. When the co-worker asked his name, he replied, This is her husband. Distinctive first name. 
the co-worker cursed at him, called him a liar, and hung up. The radio studio was filled with laughter. The jocks thought it was hilarious. They took calls from listeners who were all laughing and talking about what a great prank it was. They finally got the husband on phone, he had the distinctive name, and he was also laughing and joking that he'd surely be sleeping on the sofa tonight. He was congratulating the radio staff on a fine job they had done, terrorizing his wife. The radio hosts promised the listening audience that, because the prank was so funny, they would certainly be playing the whole recorded prank again at noon. So be sure to be listening. And call your friends. I, in my efficiency apartment listening to this, was getting mad. I was still pretty newly married and couldn't imagine doing something like this to my wife. All I could think of while the staff and listeners on the radio were laughing was that, a few miles away, a young woman, who was in the ladies' room crying, probably was co-workers trying to calm her down. What made it worse to my mind was that the guy who set her up for this was the one guy in the world who should have her back, her husband. Anger turned to resolve, and resolve formed a plan. I grabbed the city phone book, remember, it's the 80s, and looked up two phone numbers. I called the first one. You may remember that I said I had been on a radio disc jockey myself. It was a tiny dawn to dusk station, but I knew how stations worked. I knew what they liked, and more to the point, I knew what they did not like. I also had done a lot of voiceover work and could sound professional as heck. The phone rang and was answered. You've reached X Radio Jerk. I launched my attack. Me, in a professional voice? Yes. This is George Smith. I picked a more believable name. From the city office of the Federal Communications Commission. I've been getting some disturbing calls about your morning radio show. And I need to speak to your program director to discuss it. Radio guy one, stammering. Um, he's not uh, here right now. Let me get you someone else. I was put on hold. And after a few moments, radio guy two, also stammering. Hi, hello. Um, this is Radio Guy 2. You're from the FCC? Yes. This is George Smith from the city office of the Federal Communications Commission. And as I told your co-worker, I've been getting some disturbing calls about your morning radio show. And I need to speak to your program director to discuss it. Radio Guy 2, short silence. Um, he's not in yet. He'll be here at 9 o'clock. Okay, well, I can start with your station manager since he will need to be in the conversation as well. Radio Guy 2, breathing fast, starting to lose his composure. Oh, wow, um, he gets in at 9-2. I, um, I can. Can I have him call you? He have asked and have pleaded. Me letting out what I hoped was a bureaucratic sounding sigh. <sighs> Very well. I expect to hear from him at 9. I will need to speak to your station manager, your programming director, and very likely your on-air personnel from this morning. I will also need your station logs. Radio guy too? Oh yes sir. I'll make sure he calls you right away. Alright, I'll be expecting his call. Here is my number. At this point, I gave radio guy to the second number I had looked up in the phone book. The main number. The main number for the city office of the Federal Communications Commission. Radio Guy 2 stammered his thanks and promises, phone calls, and we hung up. I went back to the radio. Jerk Disc Joggy. Oh, the FCC is calling. Well, they can't do anything to me. I've got a year of pre line college and blah blah blah. He continued his defiance for a few minutes and then went to commercials. I kept listening. They stopped talking about the prank call. They stopped taking phone calls from listeners. They stopped talking to the husband. And they started playing music. A lot of music. I listened for the rest of the day. They didn't talk about it the rest of the day. And they didn't replay it at noon. In fact, for the rest of the week, I listened and heard nothing about it. I was a bit surprised. I figured that they might stop talking about it for a while. But not altogether. It wasn't until later that I realized why they went so silent. I scared them. In my quest to get a little vengeance for that crying woman I'd never met. I scared him, but more to the point, I embarrassed him, and Jerk Disc Joggy had helped. Once he went live with his bravado against a call from the feds, their listeners knew they had been called and heard the silence afterward too. They were embarrassed because I had just done to them what they had done to her, and they did not want to have to admit it. I've kept a rather distinctive name of the husband a secret, because I have always wished that I could meet that poor woman, and that name would be how I would know. It was really her. 
I doubt she's still married to this guy, but I'd like to let her know that in that place, on that day, someone had her back. Context Hi, my name is Lily, 14-year-old female. My sister, 33-year-old female. My friend, 15-year-old female. And my niece, 8-year-old female. Also, I'm one of those people that forgets everything in one second. One night, my sister called me and asked me if I could babysit my niece next week because she had to do something and my niece didn't want to go with her because it was boring. As a good sister, I accept, but I was a bit tired, so I say goodbye to my sister, brush my teeth, and sleep. My sister asked me to babysit her on Thursday and the call was on Sunday. The next day was a normal day and I totally forgot about my sister and my niece. I go to my grandma's house to help her and so on. Just a normal day. Then the next day my friend calls me and asks me, Hey girl, wanna hang out at my house on Thursday? I totally forgot about my sister so I say yes, thinking I had nothing to do that day on Thursday. My friend come over to my house, spend the day, and at night we will sleep at her house. During the day my sister drops my niece and I remember I have to babysit her. It's not a problem because my friend and my niece know each other, so we just watch movies. My grandma is with us in the house because I live with her. Then comes the night and I take my phone to call my sister to ask her if she could pick up her kid because I had to go. I say very calmly with a soft voice, Hey sissy, I'm sorry, I totally forgot so I had to babysit her but I have to go right now and I really can't stay. Can you pick her up or I can leave her with grandma, they are gonna draw and watch movies waiting for you to come. My sister starts yelling at me, insulting me and calling me names like you freaking witch. I told you to babysit her for a freaking reason. You're so stupid. You can't do anything in life. You're useless. I start to cry because I'm very sensitive and my grandma takes the phone saying that there is no need to panic and that she can keep my niece while I'm gone because it will be the last time I see my friend because she goes on vacation to another country. My sister doesn't listen and yells again so I take my friend and go in her mom's car that was waiting for us in front of the house. My friend and I had fun that night and the next day my mom was a bit mad but it's okay. So yeah. Am I the jerk? Edit, I forgot to add that the babysitting job was only supposed to be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And now some comments on the post. Someone saying, you're not the jerk. After OP added the information that the babysitting job was only supposed to be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., it's completely acceptable to call at 10 p.m. and ask where the parent is when they are 8 hours late. I probably have started calling around 3. OP, your sister doesn't get to drop her kid off and just not pick her back up. That was very irresponsible of her to abandon her kid and expect you to watch her all day. Please do start writing down your commitments on a calendar because forgetting wasn't great. And I hope you're allowed to tell your sister that you aren't available for babysitting duties anymore, especially after how she just treated you. A third commenter goes with, Oh, the you're the jerk comments are ridiculous. This is a 14-year-old young girl watching a 33-years-old woman's child. The older sister should be thankful she even has her help. She needs to act her age even in moments of frustration. The words she said to you were absolutely uncalled for. OP, you should be treated with respect and dignity, even if you make a minor mistake like forgetting a date or time. Also, don't discredit your emotions by people labeling you as sensitive. What she said was hurtful and completely unnecessary and your will was in all rights to experience such motion. A fourth commenter seals it with, Your 33-year-old sister should not be talking to you like that. Hell, I'm 24. I wouldn't talk to my 19-year-old sister like that. The fact that she was berating you and swearing at you even though she was in the wrong, it's very irresponsible of her to leave you with her child for that long. 11 hours is too much. It's also irresponsible of her to not pay you. Not the jerk by any means, and I would make it clear that you will not be babysitting again. You mentioned that your mother was mad though. Is she really not on your side? Your mom and sisters are major jerks in that case. And there you have it folks, another episode of Crown Corner comes to a close. I hope you found these stories as wild and wacky as I did. Remember, life is full of surprises, some good, some bad, and some just plain crazy. If today's tales taught us anything, it's to expect the unexpected. And always keep your cool. If you enjoyed these stories, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Stay tuned for more and until next time, keep it easy going and carefree. This is Crown, signing off.